as human beings, we are part of communities. That's how we're designed to be. And the purpose of a community is for us to be safe in. The community is supposed to look after you and you participate in the well-being of the community by looking after other people. That's how it meant to be. But in this world, it often is not the case. And the fact that you have people that are missing for long periods of time show this clearly, that in the world, people often don't pay attention to one another. Here on this website, you see people that have been missing from the Netherlands for longer periods of time. Now, most people that are reported missing, they're found within two or three days, often just a misunderstanding in communication. But there are cases when something bad happened. Now, these are some of the people that have been missing for longer than a decade. You can see it since 2003. That's a long time ago. 17 years now. I'm not sure whether these people here are still alive. Or maybe that these are people that just wanted to move away. They wanted to escape problems in their life. Maybe they had deaths. Maybe they had people that were bothering them and they wanted to flee. We don't know. In any case, something went terribly wrong. And because of what went wrong, these people are gone. And it's after the fact they're gone that people notice, okay, this individual is not here anymore. It shouldn't be like that. Whenever red flags appear, the community must become alert and start their investigation. What now happens is, is that most people in daily life are distracted, either by the, their 9 to 5 job or by other type of nonsense that's going on, so that they don't have any time to look to those near and to those around them. So when red flags appear, they don't notice red flags or they're not interested in digging deeper. And it's after someone disappears that the report is made and people begin to think, hmm, back a while back, this before this guy disappeared, there were people talking bad about him, but you know what, it was not my business, so I didn't want to get involved. You, you hear such stuff. Well, the reason I'm showing this is for you as a believer to realize that this naive idea that as long as you give in to the expectations of society that you'll be accepted and taken care for, it's a scam. Society only takes care of itself as a system. Society does not care about its individual members. It never did, it doesn't do it today, and it never will in the future. Because society as a fear construct is that a fear construct. It's meant to keep you away from doing God's will. So you get along with the distraction that you're conditioned into. When you fall down and die, there are other people desperate for social validation that will take your place. But society needs you to invest in it in order for it to remain in existence. That is why you need to feel like society cares about you. You need to feel like you are significant. You need to feel like you matter. Now, in fact, you matter because you are created in the image of God. But society is not about worshiping Christ. It's about devil worship. And in devil worship, you're nothing but a food source for demons. That's why you need to be in a state of anxiety. That's why society is designed in such a way that you are forced to operate against your natural design, because this will lead to anxiety. But in order to manage your anxiety, you're offered all these relief mechanisms by society. Some are legal, some are illegal. But that's how it goes. You are not valued for your intrinsic value. You're only valued for what you contribute to the system. At the moment you become an annoyance to the system, they will seek to replace you. That's how it goes. Many of these people 
I'm not, gonna, I'm not going to come with speculations, but I have the idea that many of them are just dead. Either they're sacrificed by cults, or maybe they, they had an ex-partner that came after them. Anyway, tragic things happen to these people. And some of those people here, when you look at their pictures, you can sense that there were bad things going on around them. So it doesn't matter which skin color you have, or from which ethnicity you are, or which language you speak, or whether you're from a poor background, or a middle class, or a wealthy background, when it comes down to it, society does not care about you at all. Society wants you to think it cares about you, to trick you into investing in it. Because the moment you realize that society does not care about you, you would not invest in it, and if more people follow your example, society would fall apart as a mechanism. And because worldlings are so attached to the validation of society, they want to they want you to think the society cares about you. Until they don't need you anymore. I don't know all the facts of all these people. Of course not. But I dare to say that there was collective neglect towards these people that led to them disappearing like that. Because let me tell you one thing. I'm an anthropologist and a sociologist also. I know human history a lot. I know a lot of history and I can tell you this. No human being can disappear just like that and there are no traces left behind. No one. Anyone, or let's say everyone that disappears, it has an effect on the collective whole. It's only because the people in the collective often don't notice that someone has disappeared because they're too distracted. And to disappear just like that, you need the financial means, and you need to have the connections. So you don't just decide, you know what, I'm tired of this life, I want some new life somewhere else. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't matter how much money you have. So, what we learn from these believers is that, first of all, we need to look after one another as believers. We need to look after the communities where we are in. That means we also need to be watchful in prayer decrees and declarations for the environment we are in. That also. But always remember, society does not care about you. It cares about your investment in it. Society is as a pathological narcissist. It's all about what you can do for it, but it does not want to hear anything about it ha having obligations towards you. The moment you demand obligations from society, society is going to call you a narcissist, and they're going to tell you that the world doesn't revolve around you, and they will tell you if you just work hard, that the world doesn't owe you anything, that you were not raised well. Think about it. If you have a marriage partner or a significant other that treats you that way, that treats you as society does, you wouldn't want to be with that individual. If you were with someone, whether as a sex partner or just a friend or a business partner or just a relative, and they treated you the same way society treats you, you'd be, you'd be gone very quickly. But because society is not one individual directly, but it's a system, it's a structure that millions of people enact, you don't see the narcissism of society. You don't see its exploitation. You don't see its violence against you. You don't see the gaslighting. Now, whether you see it or not is irrelevant. It happens. And for many people, well, they didn't see it on time and they ended up as blood sacrifices or they were violated in extreme ways. And don't let anyone tell you that nobody knows what happened to these people. If you have a neighbor and a neighbor is not around anymore, maybe you didn't notice it, but you have the guy that picks up trash every day, he noticed it, he talked about it. And he may have a job, and at a job you have colleagues that noticed it. So there are people who know things, they just don't want to be involved because they don't want to risk the relief society provides them. Because society told them to mind their own business, so that's what they do. Even when it means allowing bad stuff to happen, 
to their fellow human beings around them. Yes, worldly people allow a lot of bad stuff to happen to one another. Now, there are worldly people that are decent, that are kind-hearted, and that will invest in the fellow human beings. We have such, but overall, in general, worldly people just want to be left alone and they just want to flee. So they'll, they will allow a lot of bad stuff to happen to one another as long as they are relieved and praised by society. Believe or listen to what I'm saying, you can't serve two masters. Christ already said this. Whom do you serve? Are you serving society that will ditch, that will, that will throw you in the ditch or in the trash can? Or you get, you get where I'm going with this. You want to serve a master that only demands from you and then throws you away as if you never existed. Or do you serve God himself who gave his life for you and who rose himself from the dead on your behalf? Whom do you serve, believer? Be at peace.